Hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes on crafty fancy. But today we are talking about tablet weaving on an inklet loom. So grab a broom, put your feet up and let's get started. Welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. As I mentioned in the opening to the video, we are talking about using an inklet loom for tablet weaving today. This is my inklet loom. It is the smaller of the Ashford inkle type looms. They have a larger inkle loom as well. I have done videos on this previously. I recently received a comment on one of them asking about using this loom for tablet weaving or card weaving as it's sometimes called and I wondered whether there'd be enough space between this peg and this peg to weave with the, the tablets, but I wasn't sure um, whether it would be enough room or whether you'd really want to be using one of the larger looms. So we're gonna give it a go. Now, if you are not familiar with card weaving or tablet weaving, uh, weaving tablets or weaving cards are these kinds of things. So I have a set of wooden tablets with five holes in, one in the middle and one in each corner. I only really use the ones in the corners for weaving with. Um, I don't know I don't know when I, or if I would ever use the, the middle one to put like a core in the weaving. Um, but I use those. I have uh, six wooden ones uh, but I've also used them as templates to make some cardboard ones. This is just out of an old delivery box. So I have a few extras if I need to. I don't often card weave or tablet weave. Part of that being that I was using a jerry-rigged backstrap type setup um, to, to do it, which is great because it's really light and really cheap and really accessible. You essentially need something around your waist and you need a fixed point. Um, and you attach the wharf at one end to the fixed point. I have been known to use my foot but usually a door or that kind of thing. Something that's not gonna be opened. Don't use your bathroom door. It's not a good plan. Uh, so a cupboard door or something that's gonna stay closed for a while and uh, a belt around your waist. So you tie one end of the, the warp to your fixed object and you have the other end in your belt. And as you're advancing the warp, you're bringing the finished weaving through your belt and looping it up to keep it out of the way. And your, your fixed point is keeping the tension on what you're weaving. So it's a really easily accessible way to get into to weaving but you are tied onto something um, when you're, you're doing it, even if it's only your foot. So when the doorbell goes or you need to go to the loo, you have to sort of untie yourself from everything. Uh, whereas if you can do it on a, a loom, then it's gonna be a bit more practical for when you get called away from your weaving project. So I'm going to be warping up this loom and my tablets with some bamboo weaving thread. The stuff you've seen before, I've used it for the uh, warp on my, my tapestry loom um, and we'll have a go and we'll see if we've got enough space on this loom to to do it. Now I've not done this before so I'm going to make a start on uh, warping it up and then I'll show you what I'm doing once I've got a few things on there. Um, I've got four colours of the yarn so I'm going to put a different colour in each corner of the, the tablets and I'm going to rotate them. So colour one, two, three, four. First tablet colour one will be at the top. Second tablet colour two. Third tablet colour three. And fourth tablet colour four. And I'll just rotate them around like that. And we'll, we'll see what happens as we weave. Okay, right, so I'm going to get cracking on that. And I'll, I'll come back to you to show you how it's been warped up once that's done. Okay, so I've almost got it all warped up. I'm just using four cards as this is just a bit of an experiment uh, to see if it works, which I thought to show you how I'm warping it. Um, so I'm putting all of my warps the same way through the cards. So you can put them anti-clockwise or clockwise and you can do a mix and match depending on what pattern you're using with tablet weaving. Um, it's the S curve, Z curve thing. Um, so yeah, warp them up, thread them up, however uh, your pattern wants you to do. I'm just using a crochet hook to help me get the thread through the hole. If it's a thicker thread, you can manage to uh, just poke it through. 
um, and then I'm going to follow the path of the threads. So I'm going to go over the top. I'm not walking around every single peg this time around. I'm just trying to make sure my hands stay out of your way. So I'm going across the top. I'm actually going to go around these two at the end. And then down to the bottom here. And up to here. Then around the tension bar. Out to the end and across the bottom. So I'm not warping every single peg like I would for a normal ingle band because again this is just an experiment um, so I just want to see if it works more than anything else it's a little bit awkward to do whilst I'm trying to show you where I'm going so I'll show you a, a close-up of how I've walked it in a minute okay so once you've got your thread around I've done each thread individually just gonna make sure they're sitting nice and snug and in line with each other and my cards are sitting fairly upright and I'm going to tie the ends of each thread together and this way if one is like particularly loose or one breaks and um, you only need to to deal with the one that's needing fixing you don't have to faff about untying everything at the end it is a little tricky I have to say to get the tension when you're threading the cards up. And so I have struggled a little bit with that. I'm just going to turn this card around so I've got the fourth colour at the top. So each of my cards has a different colour at the top. The shed is going to be on this side of the cards. And so I haven't needed to go around where I would normally have the Heddles, string heddles coming up. I haven't needed to do that, and I haven't needed to go around this peg for some, or underneath this peg for some, and over for others. They're all going over the top because the shed is going to be created by the the weaving cards. Okay, so if I just move this a little bit closer, hopefully you can see the direction that we've gone for warping. As I say, it's not the full length of possible warp on this loom, as it's just an experiment. So I've started with this peg. I um, might actually trim off some of these ends in a minute because they are quite long and um, might get in the way a little bit. No, they'll probably be fine. I probably won't. I'll probably just leave them. Okay, so I've started with this peg. I've gone through my tablets in the same direction on all of them, different colour in each hole, over these two pegs, around the back of those two, down to the bottom here, up to here, and around the tensioning peg. Never forget your tensioning peg. Uh, and round the end and across the bottom. The tensioning peg is going to be particularly important. Um, it's important anyway when you're weaving, in, weaving an ankle band because you'll need to slacken it off from, from time to time um, as you're weaving, which is why I've got it towards the end of its slot but not all the way as I've warped it so I can tighten it a little bit if I need to in a minute but so that I've got plenty of room to move her as the warp tightens because as you weave, the warp gets tighter. Now, from what I gather card weaving puts even more tension on the pegs than normal inkle weaving so you do want to make sure you've got plenty of room with your tensioning peg to move things around okay so i've got my tablets roughly in line with each other all kind of standing upright all four of them and as i say i've organized mine so i've got a different color at the top on each one do whatever your pattern wants you to do um, and use as many cards as your pattern needs you to do. There is going to be a limit with the inklet loom on, on how many um, cards you can use because of the width of the pegs. So the inkle loom, which is bigger, you may be able to get more on. Uh, something like an Osberg loom, which is just like two uprights held together with a vertical. Uh, and that's going to give you loads of space to put as many as you want. Using a back strap is going to give you more space as well. Okay, so I'm going to insert my cardboard like I normally do so that I've got something to rest against and I'm just going to rotate my tablets quarter turn and that should hopefully give me another shed to pop another card in and I'm going to rotate it one more quarter turn and put a third in one 
final quarter turn. I'm just slide them up a little bit. And we're ready to start weaving. Just make sure my tablets are all around the same way. So you can already see how small a space we've got to work with. Obviously we don't normally have, once we're in the, the throes of weaving, the three bits of card in the way there just to get me started, to give me a nice uh, clean end on it. So I'm going to start weaving. I've got my bobbin here that's, uh, more shuttle rather, already got some bamboo in. So I'm just going to pop the end through and again rotate a quarter turn. Three. Go another quarter turn. And bring it back the other way. Beating as I go. One more quarter turn. So that's the basic process that you use for tablet weaving. So you use the tablets to create the sheds and weave through as normal. I'm going to start coming back the other way because if I show it here, as you're turning the cards you're actually twisting the threads together so I'm getting quite tight up that end so I'm going to go back the other way. Uh, four quarter turns, um, one quarter turn per pick, and uh, keep going. So sort of undo that a bit. Obviously this is not going to be perfect, I'm just literally trying to work out if it's possible to tablet weave on this setup. Noticing is I'm not really seeing a pattern from the warps coming through at the point where I'm weaving, and I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe I'm not beating down enough. As I say, I don't tablet weave very often, uh, so I'm going to keep going with this for a bit and I'll uh, come back and show you how it's going. Okay, so I've worked out why I wasn't seeing the pattern um, coming through. It's because I wasn't pulling the weft tight enough, which is the uh, back and forth. Um, it's not very neat, I'm having a few tension issues, but you can sort of start to see diagonal lines coming through. So it's something that I would need to practice to get neat and tidy. But I mean, just from this little bit that I've done so far, I can definitely say that yes, it is possible to do tablet weaving on the inklet loom. 
I mean, I'm no expert in it. As I say, I don't do tablet weaving very often. I probably should do more of it, to be fair. Um, but yes, it is possible. There is enough room to do a narrow band. Um, on the inklet, you just want to make sure you're watching your tension uh, when you're warping up and when you're weaving. Uh, obviously watch that twist that's coming in as you're weaving. Um, I suspect there are better ways to do it, more efficient, more effective ways to do it. But yes, I'd say it's definitely possible uh, to do. Uh, so hopefully that answers that particular viewer's question. And if anybody else is uh, thinking of tablet weaving on the inklet, I can confirm it can be done. So if you want to get started with tablet weaving and you already have an inklet loom, uh, by all means, go ahead and do that. If you're buying a new loom, I would recommend getting the largest loom that you have the finances and the space for. The reason being, you can always weave shorter than the warp that your loom allows. What you cannot do is weave longer than you can warp your loom. Um, so that would be my primary consideration when purchasing a loom. When I bought this one, this was what I could afford. Um, and I had a small place. So I mean, I was never going to be getting a floor loom. Um, I'm still not in a big enough place to get a floor loom, much as I would like one. Um, so yeah, weaving fabric to sew with is just going to have to wait till I win the lottery or something. Um, but inklet looms are nice and small. Uh, tapestry looms don't take up too much space. Um, a small rigid heddle loom, uh, or like a knitter's loom, something like that, uh, would be quite easy to fit into a smaller property. Um, so yeah, so go with the largest that you can afford and that you have the space for. Um, but if you already have an inklet loom and you want to try out uh, tablet weaving, go for it. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. And in answer to that viewer question of can you use an inklet loom to tablet or card weave? Yes, you can. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily learn it from me until I've had a bit more practice because my tension's all over the place. Um, but that's because I haven't used them for, for years. Um, so if you're looking to try this out, these are called weaving tablets or weaving cards. Um, same thing. You can get them in cardboard, you can get them in wood. There are some in different shapes with different numbers of holes, but I haven't branched out into that yet. Um, so yeah, it's perfectly possible. Let me know if you want to give it a go, uh, if you have an inklet loom or are looking to get an inklet loom, that kind of thing. This was the loom that could fit into my budget, and it is versatile in terms of functionality. Um, but in terms of the length that I can get, if I could have afforded the bigger inkle loom, I probably would have gone for that. Um, not only is it going to be a little bit heavier, so it's not going to move around on a table as you're weaving with it, um, but you can do a longer length and you can weave shorter, you just can't sort of weave longer. The benefit of the inklet is not just the price, it is very light, very small, very portable. So if you're weaving at a table, you're probably going to want to get a clamp to, to hold it steady. I don't often weave at a table on it. I'm more, more likely to have it on my lap, which I would struggle to do with an inkle loom because it's a bit longer. I mean, my reach isn't quite there. I mean, I'm sure it's possible with an inkle loom, but for the inklet, it really is lap-sized. So I can sit in front of the TV and, and weave away, which is quite handy. Um, but if I could have afforded a larger loom, I probably would have gone for that. So yeah, so that's that particular project. I will show you how I'm getting on with it once I uh, finish with it. I'm not going to be doing a huge amount of weaving over the next few weeks. It's probably going to be late July into August before I show it to you. And that's because Tour de Fleece is on, so I'm going to be doing lots of spinning over the next few weeks. Uh, that starts on the 1st of July. And uh, So what I'm going to do when I finish filming is I'm just going to ease off uh, this tension knob here, uh, which is the one that 
sticks out this end with the, the metal on it and goes uh, on the, in the slidey hole. The reason I'm going to do that is because whilst it's fully warped up and the tension's on, there's a lot of pressure on these pegs, particularly when with tablet weaving when you're twisting the, the warps around, but with any weaving really. So if you're not going to be weaving on the project that's warped on your loom for a little while, slacken off the tension, even if it's overnight, and then retighten it when you pick it up again. Uh, that way you can preserve the life of your, your loom that little bit longer. Um, some things are going to need to be chip replaced over time. The tension knob, for instance, might need replacing at some point. Some of the pegs may loosen up and need re-gluing, that kind of thing, over time. Uh, that's just general maintenance of your loom. Uh, but if you slacken the tension off a little bit and then tighten it up again when you're ready to use it, then you're good to go and it should last a that little bit longer, which when you're spending the sort of money that you're spending on a loom is, is worth doing. So I aim to put a video out every weekend, once a month it's a roundup of the things I've been working on the previous month and in between times it's videos a bit more like this where I'm looking at a particular project or a particular technique and showing you how I'm going about doing things. Um, or it might just be me waffling at the camera about something as I've got to be in my bonnet over or whatever. Um, so if you think that's the sort of thing that you'd enjoy or if you've enjoyed spending time in my company, like and subscribe down below and all that jazz and I will see you next week. But in the meantime, happy crafting and bye-bye for now.